Hi, I'm Heidi Hermand. I'm a plastic surgeon in New York. I'm clinical assistant professor of surgery at Cornell and in private practice in Manhattan. I'm Dr. Anthony Scalfani. I'm director of facial plastic surgery at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary, and I have a private practice in Manhattan. This is Kelly. Kelly is 33, uh, has uh, had some neurotoxin treatment to the upper face before, and she comes in requesting additional treatment. And so if you just look straight ahead, and I always like to start with the patients and ask them to close their eyes and just try to have them fully relax their forehead. And one thing that we notice is that forehead is not a long forehead. She's got some static right it's already. Now open your eyes. Okay, and brow doesn't really move. She's not hyper animating with the frontalis. Medial brow is a little bit low. It's a nicely shaped brow, and this is something that I always like to discuss with the patients is the actual aesthetic of the brow. Do they want an arched brow? And if so, how far and how dramatically arched do they want it? Uh, and then she's got some very fine lines there in the crow's feet area. I know you've had prior treatment. What is of particular concern to you? Well, I do have a very expressive face, so anytime I raise my eyebrows, you can see all the lines here, and I think more or less for the future wrinkles is what my concern would be. So you want to also do this more as a pre preventative, preventative thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was your prior experience with the neuro neurotoxin? Were you happy with it? Was there anything that I concerned you? I was happy. The first time I had injections, it was a little heavy in the brow. And I noticed when I had to put makeup on, I almost had to lift my own face mm -hmm. in order to put mm -hmm. makeup on. The second time, it was fine. It actually opened up my eyes a little bit. What was and different? Uh, the person who was injecting, hmm. okay. I think. So I think um, it's important um, in my practice, and um, I think you uh, demonstrated that as well, that to get a history of what has been done before and what the experience of our patients are and also um, what the concern is. Um, I agree um, with, the, uh, with the evaluation. Um, I think, um, as um, Dr. Scafani pointed out, the medial brow is low, which I think actually in Kelly is very aesthetic. Um, but um, since she is uh, concerned with the lines in the forehead, this would be an area that we would have a conversation um, about the fact that treating uh, the forehead may actually lower the medial brow. And that's why I was curious about the previous experience to see how sensitive she is um, when um, you weaken the, um, the forehead. Um, um, I do note that her um, right side of the face is the smaller side. She animates differently. She recruits the frontalis on the right side differently. These are all the asymmetries that I would discuss with Kelly ahead of time. Um, uh, she also um, has a writer, um, a larger rather left side and she animates that side differently. So these are all the nuances that we would take into account in treating um, um, Kelly. Um, so just to talk a little bit about um, the treatment um, um, uh, approach, um, tr she has very mild static lines. Uh, she's younger and um, this would be a situation where I would phase uh, the toxin and a filler if she were concerned with some of these lines. Because in her situation, likely is that if she were treated with the toxin, that these lines would attenuate enough that she would not need a filler, for example. So this would be, again, a phased approach. Um, um, go ahead and frown. Okay, so she has a really nice, strong, strong um, corrugator. She's recruiting the Proceris. So in her, um, she doesn't have much of a bunny line situation going on. So in her, I would go ahead and treat the Proceris, of course. We would treat the bulk. Of the, um, of the corrugator, and she also recruits the insertion point, um, actually in a broad band, so um, I would at least treat one point, possibly two point, laterally, superficially um, in her, so the five points, and laterally, um, possibly one or two points, um, so five to seven points for the, um, for the corrugator. Did you want to comment yeah, on your approach I, I for that? I think I would agree with that 100%. I think you do need to go a little bit more laterally. This where you can relax your forehead for a second. I, and just in terms of injecting, you can often see the muscle. Go ahead and frown. Uh, you can actually bring that, that muscle right into relief uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes. OK, you can relax now. Um, again, if we uh, you know, do treat the corrugators, you're going to get some elevation of the medial brow. Uh, we don't have a lot of forehead to work with. She's got a relatively short frontalis, so you do want to preserve some uh, frontalis activity. So you're really going to be concentrating on the upper, uh, really upper half in her, uh, upper half of her forehead. Uh, going down too low probably is what gave her that uh, depressed brow, even with treating the depressors of the brow. Uh, you still have to leave some uh, elevator uh, functional. And also, again, in terms of uh, contouring the brow, if she did want to contour it a little bit more, I may come out laterally and inject some lateral orbicularis. Okay, Kelly, go ahead and smile as well. Again, very nice. 
Okay, and you had the crow's feet area treated before yes. as well? Okay, so um, just to again uh, look a little bit closer at her um, lateral orbicularis pattern, you see that she, she actually recruits all different points, but the lower points more. Um, she's a, um, a typical case of someone who does recruit some of the pretarsal orbicularis, and in her, um, my um, approach would be um, to go very light on the lateral orbicularis and um, go ahead and treat the pretarsal orbicularis um, with a very small, about half a unit, if I was using the Botox preparation, for example, um, in that area. Did you want to comment I, on that? I agree 100%. I think you have to stay very light in a, in a patient like this. You don't want to have that shelf activity. She doesn't really have uh, as much of a shelf on this side or as much recruitment on this side, but still, uh, you do need to leave some of that intact and uh, just sort of sneak into the lower lid just a little bit with a very diluted, very small amount of neurotoxin just to blend that in. Right, and you make a great point uh, because your side is different, the right side is different than the left side and, and a good approach is to customize obviously Absolutely. based on how the uh, person is recruiting different parts of the muscle and different parts of the face. Um, I did want to point out that um, Kelly does have um, some volume loss around the orbit. Um, and the, um, uh, the male are crease, and um, she looks like she has fat bags, um, but in fact, a lot of that is attributed to volume loss, and um, she would be a person in whom I think multimodality treatment, um, toxin and um, volume repletion in this area would work very well, mm -hmm. and uh, possibly using a neuromodulator would um, increase the longevity. Would you do that at the same time, or would you stage that? I would do that in the, at the same time. I would probably stage her. it. Uh, that's just a personal preference, yeah. but. Did you want to comment on that? No, so. I, I think, again, uh, you know, I would use a, uh, an HA product right in, in that tear trough, fill that out. Uh, you can try to sculpt a little bit of the medial uh, malar eminence here. She does have a little bit of flattening here, just to highlight that just a tiny bit and not get hung up about chasing a nasolabial fold. I wanted to comment also a little bit on the position of the brow that you um, hinted on. Um, we talked about the shape of it, but the position, um, a lot of younger people do have lower brows and it is very aesthetic. And um, as we talked a little bit at the beginning, go ahead and um, uh, lift up your brow. And you had mentioned her um, a small forehead. Again, it's very important and relax. So she has some shadow showing, shadow space to work with. And as she mentioned, it's very important not to over treat the frontalis in her because she would be one of, um, the types of shape of the upper lid that is very quickly going to get very heavy, meaning even a very small descent of the brow is going to be very palpable to her. And then she's, you mentioned that you had to lift up your brow to apply mm -hmm. your, so she would be very, very sensitive. Someone with a deep shadow space may actually be less sensitive um, to a little bit of brow ptosis. So um, um, this would be a point um, to pay close attention to. I agree, and, and, and you brought up a great point that stylistically a lot of younger women do like that lower brow with less of the standard traditional arch, but the problem is if you do want to treat the forehead, you've got to release the brow depressors. You've got to do something. So you may not want to go as aggressively uh, in the corrugator uh, if she didn't want to change the brow shape too much, uh, but you do need to treat that. I think one last point to make, again, from my standpoint is um, Kelly is younger um, and um, she would be a, a really um, a typical person that I would not go heavy on as far as neuromodulators. Uh, she's going to be using neuromodulators for a long time and to stay looking as great as she's looking now and even better. So less is more that we've been talking about um, a lot here really applies in her case. Um, and to really optimize um, their reaction to the toxin uh, for many years to come. 